Hey, I'm uh, Dane, uh, the Oz Review. I'm Harrison Mitchell, the Movie Guru 16. And I'm Zane. On internet. Yeah. And welcome to the podcast. Basically today, we're going to be discussing our favourite movies from the year 2000 to 2012. And then after that, we're going to be talking about our most anticipated movies for the rest of the year. So, let's get started. Alright, so um, I'm going to start. And um, so, the year 2000, it uh, was a great year for movies. Uh, and this film that I'm about to tell you of my favourite of the year is... um my uh, uh, fifth favorite film of all time uh it's just absolutely amazing and it's american psycho it's a very very um, just impeccable film everything about it is just flawless the acting the the twist that the plot throws at you just the subtle cleverness that the film has and the direction is all fantastic christian bale probably gives one of my favorite Performances in film history, which is why American Psycho is my favorite film of the year 2000. Now, I agree with American Psycho. There's not much more I can really say about it. I do really like the performances. I think that Christian Bale looks the best he's ever been. Um, I like the tone of the movie. I like the creepiness. I like it. You know, it can make you laugh at times, not really purposely sometimes, but... Uh, the chainsaw scene, love that. Uh, <laughs> it's just, it's just a good movie, and you got to, you got to watch it. You got to watch it, and uh, it's just great. Indeed, you do, and don't put a cat in the ATM, as they say. So, uh, Harrison, <laughs> mine's Chicken Run. We're going into a little in depth of why, maybe. Okay. Well, you see, Chicken Run, I think, is a very clever, very clever, and very funny. Uh, animated movie from Ardman Entertainment. Chicken. It's the first movie that I saw in theaters. It's an extremely fun ride. Highly recommended. It's definitely a great movie. I love it. And uh, by the way, if you're from Australia, you'll probably get this reference. Movies rated R are restricted to adults. 18 years and over. <laughs> um, okay. Um, <laughs> uh, no. Yes. Yeah, indeed. Um, so 2001 was uh, another great year for film. I'm not going to say that for every year, because every year is a great year for film as far as I'm concerned, but 2001 is Donnie Darko. This film is probably my um, 15th favourite film of all time. Uh, it used to be my... It used to be really high up there, but just I've seen a lot um, more films that I enjoy a bit more, but it is just a great film. Uh, very um, underrated as far as the uh, mainstream audience goes, but it's it's fine as the cult classic that it is, and it's just a great film. So definitely check it out if you haven't, um, and expect to watch it more than once. So. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's it. I gotta. Yep, yep. <clears throat> I gotta agree with you. Uh, I yes, yeah, it's the second time this has happened, but yes, I really, this used to be my number one movie of all time, but then, you know, I just couldn't decide what my number one was, so I just have a top ten movies, and this is in there, and I really love from the direction to the soundtrack, to the writing, to the creepiness, to the, to the, yeah, everything about this movie is great, now, there's not one single aspect of the movie that I don't like, I, I like how you have to kind of watch it a thousand times to understand it, and then it's like the director's cut, it's all, it's all really enjoyable stuff, and that movie is just fantastic, and I love that film. Very true. Harrison, what's your favorite film in 2001? Mine's Monsters, Inc. Now, you may be asking yourself, Harrison, why is Monsters, Inc. your favorite film of 2001? Well, their children, I have the answer for you. <clears throat> in my opinion, Monsters, Inc. is one of the best, one of the most emotional, one of the funniest, and just overall, one of the greatest animated movies ever created. Pixar is... Amazing. I'm just going to say it. Pixar is amazing. They are we very already amazing. know that, but Monsters, Inc., man. Monsters, Inc. Yeah. is incredible. I remember seeing it in the theaters. I love Monsters, Inc. It's terrific. Yeah. If you haven't seen Monsters, Inc., you are severely missing out because that is an amazing You movie. haven't lived. No, you have not. Um, so, uh, 2002... I'm not going to say it was a great year for film, even though it was, but I'm kind of doing it now, which is wasting time. But 2002 is Spider-Man. Just want to go into why. It's kind of a real sort of nostalgic film for me because 
although it wasn't my first cinema experience by any means, it was my most memorable early cinema experience. Um, I just remember a lot of watching the film, just the cinema I was in and the vibe it had. It just has. It was a really great film. Um, it was just perfect for its uh, time. Great superhero movie. Uh, one of the best. It's just fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, another one I agree on there, Spider-Man. I, Marvel is my favourite film franchise, and the Spider-Man films are definitely, well, I think one of my favourite trilogies. I actually do like the third. It is definitely the weakest. But, uh, yes, the, the first one, which was classic, and, it, you know, built up the trilogy, and I think it uh, really captured scenes from the comic books correctly as it should have been, and uh, J.K. Simmons was excellent in that movie. And, uh, yes, I love it. The fight scenes, the direction, it's all good. Spider-Man. So awesome. Thank you. Yes, Spider-Man is indeed my favourite film of 2002. Also, so we got a threesome of Spider-Man going on here. That uh, sounded really, yeah. really gay. Uh, no web. Uh, Big spider orgy. Man webs everywhere. Ah, all right. So 2003... <laughs> Um. No, uh, Sp- come on, <laughs> let me talk about Spider-Man. Now, I remember sitting in the theatre watching Spider-Man for the first time. <laughs> you deserve to after that. Crapping my pants with fear because I was that scared. But, yeah. hey, it all made up when I revisited the film on VHS. Again and again, I adore Spider-Man. He's my favourite superhero. Love that movie. Excellently directed. Amazing fight scenes. And back to you, Dane. All right, so that was... Uh great reason why you like Spider-Man, uh, I must say. Uh, 2003. Thank you! This is a very tough film for, like, uh, sorry, very tough year for me, because we saw some phenomenal films. Uh, two shout-outs I want to give specifically. Um, I do, would, I would like to give more, but just keeping it at two. Uh, one of them is Old Boy, a very innovative film. It's fantastic. If you haven't seen Old Boy, which uh, some of you probably have not, definitely check it out. It is definitely a must-watch. And uh, another, the next one is Finding Nemo, uh, one of my favourite Pixar films, and it just uh, hits us close to home because it's set in Australia, which is great. But um, uh, my favourite film of 2003 overall is Big Fish. The uh, direction, just everything about it, the storyline, it's warm fuzziness, it's just a just a great storytelling film. It's similar Not to Forrest fuzziness. Gump. Yep, indeed. It's just a great, uh, if you like films like Forrest Gump, you'll definitely love Big Fish, so if you haven't seen Big Fish, definitely watch it. It's an extremely rewatchable movie, and it's good for all ages. Oh, uh, that I have not seen that film, but yes, it uh, sounds a fun family film. Uh, now, uh, mine is not a family film. Uh, it is Kill Bill Volume 1. Now, Kill Bill <laughs> Volume 1 is the first of the Kill Bill, <laughs> Kill Bill duology, uh, which you never know, could be a trilogy, but we'll have to see. Uh, yes, yeah, so I love the way uh, Quentin Tarantino directs his movies, and especially this movie. It's uh, it's real cool. Uh, I like the spaghetti western uh, kung fu mix in there, and it's just a really fun movie, which violence and fight scenes uh, really deliver the impact of the film and I, and I love the movie the Kill Bill Volume 1 is just the movie I, if I start to watch it I can't I can't leave without finishing it so yes Kill Bill Volume 1 is uh, 2003 thank awesome. you uh, well my favourite film of 2003 is a family fun film and I am of course talking about Finding Nemo Finding Nemo really hits close to home it's set in Australia it's one of Pixar's finest works. It does, it does, yes. Brilliant animated movie. <laughs> Highly recommended. Definitely check it out. It is incredible. That's it. And indeed it is. Um, just uh, before we get into 2004, um, will you be seeing the 3D re-release of the film, Finding Nemo? Yes. Indeed I will. I shall. Okay, um, so 2004... Uh, <laughs> You know, Shaun of the Dead and The Notebook, I just want to give those two a shout out because they're both great films, but overall, just honestly, this I have to give this to The Terminal. Tom Hanks, just, he never disappoints, and this definitely is not one of the ones um, that didn't make much sense, but um, The Terminal, great film, just everything about it is fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, the... the <laughs> The performance from Tom Hanks is nearly as good as uh, Tim Allen in the Santa Claus. That's all I'm going to say. 
Ah, oh, yes, yes, yes. Yes, yeah, that is a good performance in the Santa Claus. One of my favourite uh, performances. Now, my favourite of 2004 is the Super Great film! My 2002 pick. Uh, excuse me, Harrison, that is very uh, rude of you to interrupt me while I'm talking about my favourite film from 2004. I'm uh, yes, sorry, the sequel Dave. to the hit film. Uh, 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 it's the sequel to the hit film Spider-Man, and as you have guessed, it is Spider-Man 2. Now, oh, this is my favourite superhero movie. Uh, some may differ; it's not that good. Well, come on, give it a give it a give it a try. It's it's just fantastic. It's got the one of the best fight scenes ever on the train. Uh, Spider-Man versus Doc Ock, just just fantastically directed. Uh, there is an extended version. Yeah, I believe it's called Spider-Man 2.1. Uh, now there are some extended scenes in there, and they just add to the comedy and fight scenes of the film uh it has a good mix between dark and uh light tones or the acting while can be very cheesy is mostly good most of the time uh it is one of the best movies in my opinion and it is in my top 10 movies of all time spider-man 2 is uh an awesome tacular movie uh thank you and good night a uh, great justification i must say ah uh, yes great commentary there zane now, my favorite film is <clears throat> yes, yes. no not sorry my favorite film of that year is spider-man 2 i remember getting an event screening for this movie my mom taking me to see it me freaking out about it loving this movie yeah. i adore spider-man 2 it's one of the best superhero movies ever created and brilliantly directed amazing fight scenes if you don't love this movie then you probably can't call yourself a comic book fan yeah um very good yeah uh so 2005 I uh, I know Batman Begins came out in this year, but personally, I'm going. Oh, uh, Dane, I'm really sorry to interrupt you there, but I have to give some shout outs if that's okay to that is, uh, the 2004 films. Um, first shout out is the Terminal. The Terminal, Steven Spielberg's my favorite director. This is probably one of his more subtle movies. I think we can all agree on that, but it is definitely one of his best. I love yeah. the Terminal. It's a very heartwarming movie. It is ha, has an extremely good performance from Tom Hanks, and the other honorable mention is Shaun of the Dead. Edgar Wright's actually my second favorite director. Shaun of the Dead, such a cleverly written comedy, one of my favorites of all time, one of the best zombie movies of all time, and it probably is my favorite zombie movie to be honest. Although The Walking Dead, I mean that is amazing, but uh, yeah, that's all I have to say. Okay, so that's a shot. Tim Allen is a great direct, uh, actor. Sorry. And um, 2005, <laughs> I know Batman Begins came out in this year. Everyone loves Batman Begins, although it is quite underrated. Everybody appreciates the film, and it's just a great superhero movie. But I'm going to have to give this uh, 2005 spot yes. to V for Vendetta. It is just a great film. It's it's a perfect film, in my opinion. Great performances, great direction. The story is very new and innovative, and it's just a all-round perfect film in my opinion so if you haven't seen Aviva Vendetta it's definitely one you absolutely have to check out and yeah oh I will be checking that film out uh, now my 2005 is also kind of the comic book sort of a graphic novel should I say <laughs> adaptation uh, it is Sin City now I do rate Batman Begins higher but I just think I, I like Sin City a bit more for some reason. Uh, it, it, I really like the direction. I think that's why it's really different, and it's really it's basically just taking pages from the graphic novel. It looks exactly the same. Uh, the way that it's in black and white most of the time, it, it's really cool. Uh, I like the visual effects and all the actors in the movie. It's a fun, violent, thrill ride of a film. That you just, you just, you just gotta see Sin City. You got it. Yeah, yeah. And Harrison, you can, you can take over. Thank you there, Zane and Dane, both uh, very good films that I haven't seen. I'll definitely be getting on that. But my favourite film of 2005, yes. I believe it is, is one of my favourite comedies, and that is Judd Apatow's The 40-Year-Old Virgin. The 40-Year-Old Virgin is a movie ah. that basically taught me about life. Just just to Your put it that way. You should uh, take that quote. and uh, Yeah, that but... Uh, is, uh... The 40 year old version, it is a hilarious comedy. Uh, Kelly Clarkson! Yeah, it, it's great. It's genius. Uh, probably my favorite Judd Apatow movie. I think it's hilarious. Uh, Steve Carell's terrific. And uh, yeah, uh, love 40 year old version. Uh, very great, Harrison. Um, 
So, 2006, I want to give two shout-outs because this is a very tough year uh, uh, for me uh, and probably for others, but uh, The Departed and The Da Vinci Code are both fantastic films. But, come on, Casino Royale, it's just a great action film, a great James Bond film, and you, everyone knows that it changed 007 James Bond series to great degrees. And so, 2006 is Casino Royale. Okay, now, my 2006 choice is going to get, uh, I think, uh, a lot of people go, <laughs> But, uh, you know, I think I love this movie because the director, he's, he's just become my favourite director. I've replaced Nolan, even though he's still excellent. I think the guy, this guy's visionary direction is just fantastic. And please don't bash me if you don't really love his movie as much as I do. It's 300. Now, I love Zack Snyder. He's he's very underrated, in my opinion. A lot of people look at his movies as stupid. But I I, I think that the way that he directs them is really cool. It's it's different. It's he Every movie has, has a certain style. And I think that his are awesome. And 300, while the story may be simple, it it makes up for it with the awesome action, the awesome direction of the five scenes. It's like the way that it's filmed is just excellent. I really love it. It's all done in the studio. It's completely believable, and I love Three Hundred. And that is my two thousand six choice. That is a very great choice, I must say. Thank you. That is a very good justification as to why you chose that film. Very good choice, there, Zane. Oh, uh, thank you. That is actually my honorable mention for two thousand six. Uh, I have seen most of Three Hundred. And from what I saw, it was purely brilliant. I love, I love Zack Snyder's direction. He's a very <laughs> visual director. However, I don't have much of a problem yes. with that. He does a good job. Uh, but my favorite film of 2006 is, same as Dane's, uh, Casino Royale. Casino Royale basically rebooted the whole James Bond franchise, and it honestly could be my favorite James Bond movie. <laughs> it is brilliant. I love Casino Royale. It's great, definitely. If you haven't seen it, then you're missing out so much. Indeed you are. Thanks for that, Harrison. Um, 2007. Um, it was, I'm going to say this now, it was a great year for film, and a lot of you are probably going to be shocked at uh, this, but it's super bad for me. Just a very funny, That's good film. dirty comedy, raunchy comedy, and it's just, all the characters are so likable, even the ones that you're supposed to dislike and there's just so many just great quotes and it's just absolutely hilarious and you can just watch it a million times and it's still funny so that's why super bad is my favorite film of the year 2007 yes it is a funny film uh, i like the cast in that movie but yes my <laughs> choice is a sequel to an uh, ad two action movies uh, yes, it, it stars Matt Damon, and it's got a lot of shaky cam. It's the Bourne Ultimatum. Now, I think that even though it has a lot of shaky cam, and it is, you know, it might be hard to concentrate for the most normal human being, but, you know, I'm weird, and I think that it's actually well-directed with the shaky cam. Uh, it, I like the story. It's really interesting, and Matt Damon was cool. The action was in your face. It was explosive. It was, it was really badass. It was, like, the most badass, I say that as an American, uh, one of the series, and I think it just smashes the first two Born movies, and it, it's just great. It is a great movie, and thank you for that. There you go, Harrison. Very good. It's funny that you talk about the shaky cam like that, Zane, because that is exactly how I felt with the Hunger Games. So, in your face. Uh, yeah, but no, but that was that was done awfully. Thank you. That hung, that that. I thought Shaky it was, well, was I just said that was how I thought it. I thought it. That's how I would describe that. Oh, well, uh, Hunger Games, uh, we may disagree, uh, Zane, but... Yes, my favourite film of 2000 is... Shut up, let's move on. Hey! Hey! You're so Seven. rude! For real! What? Yeah, oh, come sorry. On. Come on. I'm sorry, my favourite film of 2007 is... Edgar Wright's Hot Fuzz. Hot Fuzz is one of my favourite comedies. It is a purely genius and hilarious movie. I love the fact that it kind of parodies the cop movie genre, yet it is a cop movie itself. It's really hilarious. Great action scenes. Brilliantly directed by Edgar Wright. Uh, yeah, nothing really much to say. Hot fuzz. It's brilliant. Indeed. Yeah. So, just should we just shoot through this? Because I don't know what your, guy, your guys' choices for 2008 are, but... 
you know, mine's the Dark Knight. The and, yeah, just shoot through them. Yeah, agree. Yeah, yeah, mine's the Dark Knight. But I have to give an honourable mention to Iron Man, because that movie is incredible. It is, and oh, so yeah. is The Incredible Hulk. I do like that film. I think it's quite underrated as far as the other yeah. films go. Yeah. Definitely yeah. agree. That is a very underrated Marvel movie. But my favourite Marvel movie, yeah, is probably a tie between Iron Man and Spider-Man 2. Iron Man is a brilliant movie, but The Dark Knight has to take the cake on this one. It it, it really does, because yeah. it's, it's, it's a comic book movie, but it is one of the best action movies as well. And it's just, you know, yeah, everyone the direction loves... Just... Exactly. Everyone just loves Dark Knight for many reasons, and it's just a fantastic film. So, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, 2009, um, you guys might feel similar, although it was a great um, year for film, but uh, 500 Days of Summer, it's um, just a very sort yeah. of subtle, just very relatable romantic film and it's just it hits all yeah. the places and it's just a remarkable movie Joseph Indeed. is just one of the most likable characters in this film if I must say and one of the most relatable as well yeah indeed yeah I, uh, I also chose uh, 500 Days of Summer I think it is not only one of the best directed romantic comedies if you call it that uh, I think that it was so cool because usually the movie like this is shown from the female perspective and it's kind of dull and just typical this movie is shown from the male's perspective and it, we can relate to it more it's funny it's sad it, it makes you it's an emotional roller coaster is what it is Indeed. and it's just great i think it's a fantastic movie that you should all see oh what a coincidence mine is also yep. 500 days of summer it is a very no movie it's shut up god but hey. I... Yeah, I love 500 Days of Summer. It's a brilliant movie. Love it to bits. Can't really say any more because these guys have pretty much said it already. But yeah, Mark Webb, I have faith in The Amazing Spider-Man. And you should... Just do. about to say, what are your guys' thoughts on him directing The Amazing Spider-Man? But um, yeah. yeah, we've all got... Uh, he'll do good, I think. Yeah. So um, 2010 was just... It was honestly one of the best years for film in the decade. One of the most memorable. Yeah, it was great. Absolutely just... Agreed. Film changing, just great movies. I have right, to and agree. These two shout outs will come as a shock to most people, and so will my favourite. But uh, I have many reasons why. 100. Uh, oh, sorry, I did something very bad there. But uh, the two shout outs are the social network and Inception. I could go into great depths why, but um, my favourite is 127 Hours because it's just. One of it's it's honestly just the most inspirational film of all time, and it's just James Franco is honestly godlike in this film as far as his acting goes. He literally yeah. keeps everybody captivated for the whole you know time he's on screen, and not once do you get bored of watching his character or relating or feeling for his character. It's just <clears throat> the movie does absolutely hit all the right places, and it just it pulls it off. Too, almost too effectively. It's just a perfect film, in my opinion. Yeah, it uh, truly, truly is. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Uh, now... Love the way you said that, Zane. Thank you. Uh, now, my two shout-outs, actually, okay, yeah, is Inception and a movie that was my favourite of the year, but I did change it. Uh, it was Buried. I love Buried, yeah, Buried. Uh, but it is not my favourite. Uh, uh, my favourite is The Social Network. Now, uh, it, it's because of the dialogue, the acting, the soundtrack especially. I think uh, the director, uh, David Fincher, all of his movies have a good tone to them and I really love the way that he directs movies and uh, I love the cast. I just love everything about that movie. There's not a point in a mo the movie when I was bored, usually if it's just dialogue. I kind of can get bored and that movie I just didn't at all. I was well invested and it's on a relatable topic because I'm on Facebook 24-7. So I really liked that movie. It was great. Uh, that is my reasons for the in, social network. Just uh, indeed, I, and I need to say this, that seriously, the dialogue in the social network is almost as, it's if not as good as the just intriguedness, if that's a word, just, you know what I'm trying to say there. Yeah. Sort of, you know, enthralled level that you get in Pulp Fiction, and it does it. Yeah. Phenomenally. So. I literally have five shout outs to give because 2010 <laughs> was such a terrific movie 
Uh, yeah, 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 but movies, not a terrific movie, lol. But, uh, yeah, uh, my first honorable mention goes to Buried. Uh, Buried is a terrific movie. I love Buried. The Just the claustrophobia and Ryan Reynolds' performance just make this movie, and it feels very much like an Alfred Hitchcock movie, and I love that because Alfred Hitchcock is brilliant. And, yeah, another honorable mention goes to Toy Story 3. Toy Story 3 is honestly one of the greatest animated movies ever. Toy Story Trilogy is brilliant. I love it. Another one goes to The Social Network. You guys have pretty much said that. The dialogue in that movie is absolutely incredible, filled with amazing performances, and David Fincher could not have done a better job with that movie. Another honorable mention goes to Inception. Christopher Nolan's mind-blowing masterpiece. That movie is incredible. But... My favorite film of 2010, in case you guys haven't guessed already, is yeah. Edgar Wright's Scott Pilgrim vs. The World. Now, I know a lot of people are kind of split with this movie. I personally think it is brilliant. However, it's definitely not a film for everyone. I know that Zane doesn't really like it. I give it four out of five. That means I like it, but I it's just don't like film. it. It's a good film. It's just, yeah. yeah. It's, not, it's not a just, it's not a perfect film. That's my opinion, though. It's, yeah, yeah, understandable, you know, but I think it's the definition of a perfect movie, to be honest. <laughs> I mean, the dialogue is terrific, the visuals are absolutely outstanding, the way it's shot, the action, the dialogue, the comedy, the witness, the the, the witness, the wit, the wittiness, the, script, the, wittiness, the direction by <laughs> Edgar Wright is absolutely superb, and I think all three of Edgar Wright's movies have been in my favourites of this whole millennium. Actually, no. Yeah. Spider Man 2 was 04. So, yeah. But, um, honestly, Scott Pilgrim, it could be my favorite movie. Uh, there's just so many to choose from, though. But Scott Pilgrim vs. the World is amazing, and it is pure awesomeness, and it is an epic of epic epicness. In, indeed. And just moving on to 2011, I need to say that. We all, just every single, like, mo nearly every film that honestly came out this year was great. You know, we did have some bad ones, but I mean, all the good ones were just so worthy of everything, and it's just, I'm not even going to give shout-outs, because you, you all know that, you know, films like Warrior and just all those great yeah. films, Hugo and stuff like that, just, you don't need to give them shout-outs, because everyone knows they're great films, and yeah, it's too many to give a shout-out for, but... I honestly can't come up with my favourite, so I'm going to split it. I can't even give one of them a shout out because they're both just just as worthy. And that is the Girl with the Dragon Tattoo and Drive. Yeah, good, uh, good, good choices there. Good uh, combo there. Yeah, had to give it the combo. Couldn't let one just go before the other. Uh, Care to expand? <laughs> no. Can't. All right. All right. Fair um, enough. I can, but no. Nah. <laughs> Say you go. Okay. Now this is a movie that hasn't been released in Australia, but you know me. I'm a yeah. reckless, reckless <laughs> boy. Uh, <laughs> so, so yes. Yeah, so, uh, I guess you. I guess you could say like people wanting to watch this online. They have like a a fifty fifty. Uh, idea of if they want to actually do something illegal or wait for it. And yes, it is the film 5050. Now, this movie is an emotional roller coaster, a ride for the family. Well, not really the family. It, it has coarse <laughs> language and sex scenes. So we don't really want that. But yes, it is well acted. It's amazing. It makes you nearly cry. It makes you laugh. It makes you dance. It makes you feel happy and sad. And Seth Rogen was hilarious. It had great comedic relief. And at the end, I'm not going to tell you what happens. But just even though it is such an amazing ending, you still you still want more. And I think that the movie, you know, if you just watch it a million times, it's it's great. And I think oh, Joseph Gordon Levitt should have gotten nominated. Thank you. No, he should have and... won, honestly. I mean oh, far out. Yeah. He got so, so robbed, I just need to say that. <coughs> George Clooney. Yeah. No, no, uh, no, 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 I haven't seen 50-50 yet, so I can't comment. But my favourite film of last year, so many honourable mentions to give out, but I'm not going to, not going to bother, because we all know how great last year was. Uh, but, yeah, my favourite film, say, it's really hard to decide, so...
Okay, so 2011 was a terrific year for movies. Obviously, I can't really give any honorable mentions because it was that good of a year. Everyone knows how many great movies came out that year. But my favorite film of 2011, it's really hard to decide yeah. for me. It is really hard to decide. So I have, this is kind of like a tie, but I will eventually tell you what my favorite one is because they are that close together. So, the one, ah, okay, David Fincher's The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo is such a well-made movie. It's brilliantly directed. It's so well-written. I love the way that it's told. Edited. It's extremely beautiful. It's really well-edited. The score is incredible. It's brutal. It's disturbing. It's, it's, in, it's really an incredible movie. Good feel-good movie. No, not really, but, um... <laughs> Yeah, but my favorite film of 2011, uh, Dane, I know you think this movie is overrated, and you overhyped it though, so, yeah, but, um, my favorite film of 2011 is Alexander Payne's The Descendants. Now, the reason why I chose The Descendants is because it hit me on such an emotional level, and more so than The Ghost of Dragon Tattoo, and... I honestly think it's just a more beautiful movie than Go Through Dragon Tattoo, so it's really close though, like really close. It could even be a tie, but if I had to choose one, then definitely The Descendants. So yeah, that movie is terrific. That movie is amazing. Yeah. All right, so that uh, wraps up our favorite films from the year 2000 to 2011. Uh, what we're going to do now is uh, being the end of April, we're going to say our favourite film so far of 2011, and then after that we're going to delve into our top five most anticipated for the rest of the year. So um, I'll start by saying the um, the 20 the, my favourite film so far of 2012 is, you know it is American Pie Reunion. This film just hit it for me everywhere, being just a diehard fan of the original uh, trilogy, and it's just, yeah, just, as I said, it hit all the right places, and it was just, just so nostalgic, so American Pirate Union is my favorite film of the year so far. Some will, uh, definitely disagree, but it's just, uh, me personally. It's not the best film, I can't really say that, but it's my personal favorite, so. Yeah, the, that movie's good, I just thought some of the acting was a little, yeah. Yeah, but, God, uh, Chris Klein. Uh, yeah, I thought he was better than the guy with the beard, I forget his name. But, uh, yes. Uh, that is favorite... young Kevin. Yes, I don't like his actor. Now, 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 hey, now, brown cow. It is my turn to pick. Give me the and... meltdown. Oh, shut your mouth. Out. No, I'm, I'm sorry, I was in a... should apologize for my rude behavior. But, um. I can apologize for mine too, so I apologize. Zane, yeah. That is, that is, that is a great apology. But anyway. Uh, yes, yeah, so I I haven't really been I've been trying to be harder on movies this year, so haven't really read one as hard. Ha, harder. Uh, s- s- shut up, Harrison. Uh, s- since Chronicle. Now I haven't really watched Chronicle again, or obviously not because it's not out anymore and it hasn't covered Blu-ray yet. But uh, yes, Chronicle I thought was a near perfect movie. I gave it four and a half out of five, uh, uh, a nine out of ten, an A minus. I thought it was a good film, nearly perfect. Yeah, never bored. You know, it w- it really took the advantage of filming on hand held cameras. Although at times I thought it got a little stupid. But uh, yeah, that I didn't really have too many problems with that movie. I thought it was very entertaining, very original, and Oh, very unique. Uh, yes, and it is just a great, fun film that I could watch again and again. Thank you. Lovely uh, little choice there, Zane. Uh, very unique. Thank you. Thank you. But yes, my favourite film of 2012 so far, I know some people feel differently, but it's The Hunger Games. I've only really seen five movies this year, so <laughs> shut up. But, yeah, The Hunger Games, I thought, was a really, really well-made movie. Uh, I thought it was terrific. It was great. Loved it. It was terrific. Yeah, just... I can't really say much about it, because a lot of people already have. But I adore The Hunger Games. It's one of the best book adaptions I've seen recently, apart from Harry Potter. But, yeah, it's a really great movie. If you haven't seen The Hunger Games and you're interested, then definitely check it out. Yeah. 
Alrighty, yeah, so what we're going to do now is we're going to explain our uh, top five most anticipated for the rest of the year. So um, I'll start off uh, by, I want to give uh, just one little honorable mention to Moonrise Kingdom. Uh, it looks like yeah, it's going to be absolutely fantastic. I'm very excited for that movie. And yeah, so that's, uh, but uh, coming in at number five, we've got Ridley Scott's uh, Prometheus. Now, a lot of film fans are looking forward to this movie, and I am one of them. It just looks absolutely fantastic. I went and saw Titanic in 3D and the trailer in 3D for Prometheus. The 3D looks absolutely amazing, and I'm just looking forward to this film in so many levels, so that's why it's my number five. Uh, so what's your guys' number five? Oh, uh, my, I'll, yes, I'll give a shout out to another one I'm looking forward to, uh, which, you know, it's Looper. Uh, that I think, oh, you know, yes. it, it does have uh, the possibility to be the next in time, as people have said. It, it could turn out bad, but I think it's in the hands of good people, good actors, and it looks like a very different and good film. But yes, my number five is the, uh, uh, the, Quentin Tarantino movie uh, is my number five because I haven't seen too much of it besides the trailer and there's no oh fuck besides the poster and there's no <laughs> trailer. So uh, yes, Django Unchained. I'm very excited. Great cast, great director, and uh, nothing much I can say as yet. Thank you. Passing it over to Harrison. Ah, uh, hello there. Yes, my honorable hello. mention is The Avengers. Now I know this is definitely a lot higher on some people's list, but Actually, no, sorry. My honorable <laughs> mention is the James Bond movie Skyfall. Now, this movie is directed by Sam Mendes. He, I've heard he's a very great director. I'm really, really excited for Skyfall. It's supposed to be, you know, it, it seems like it's in good hands. So I'm extremely excited for the movie. Lo looks terrific. There's some great images that have been released, getting some great buzz, having some good Bond girls. But yeah, looks like a great movie. I haven't heard much uh, buzz on that one, but um, I mean, like what, what <laughs> the um, oh, shut up. <laughs> but I mean, like what uh, the director and actors have been saying about it. So yeah, yeah, no, no, I get it. Um, it's it's all goods. Um, but uh, my number four is literally this could be my number one if it wasn't for the uh, the next three that I'm going to explain. But honestly, I am anticipating this film so much and that's the cabin in the woods the buzz for this film is just amazing being a horror fan i'm just so excited to see if this film really does deliver for me and i'm just honestly that excited for it which is why it deserves my number four spot thank you um uh yes i don't want to start to get into my clichedness that a lot of people are saying but yes it is a prometheus at number four uh yes uh i don't really want to talk about it that much everybody knows what it is ridley scott could be is it the alien prequel has that been confirmed yeah uh, he's uh, uh the, yeah, the people still, think it is but he's you know he's, he's he fan. says it's a part of the alien universe which i think it could be both all right um yeah so i'm still pretty excited to see how it turns out you know it looks it looks like it's going to be in uh, a good filmmaking that makes no sense style <laughs> so yes uh good hands yes 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 uh harrison ah yes is this uh, our number five picks number four four number four wait no i thought yes. we we're giving honorable mentions then number five now we already did it okay so just say your number five and now go to your number four uh, number five is The Avengers. Uh, looks terrific. I'm really, really excited for it. It looks like a great movie, getting some really good early buzz. But yeah, it's The Avengers. Don't really need to say anymore. All these superheroes coming together. Looks great. My number four pick is Nicholas Winding Refn's Only God Forgives. Only God Forgives sounds like one of the coolest movies ever. Uh, the plot just sounds so intriguing. Uh, Ryan Gosling looks terrific in the movie. Uh... I'm really, really excited. Drive was a huge hit. I love Drive. My third favorite of 2011. But yeah, I'm so excited for God. Only God Forgives. It's it's great. Indeed, it is. Now, <laughs> my uh, number 
3 is The Amazing Spider-Man. Just judging by a, a lot of the clips and trailers, this film looks just staying true to every the comics and everything. And Andrew Garfield is a fantastic actor, and all the other people in this film look absolutely great. And just everything about this movie looks absolutely epic, and that is why it's well deserving of my number three spot. Uh, mine is. Uh, yes, it is the Avengers uh, PS seeing it on Tuesday night. <laughs> but yes, it uh, looks, you know, not to be too cliche, it just looks fantastic. I mean, I'm a huge Marvel fanboy, more of a fan of Marvel than I am of DC. But yes, uh, yes, it, it looks like uh, it, it's in good hands with uh, what's his face? Uh, uh, Joss. Joss. Jossy Joss, yep. He's, yes, big Josso. Uh, he's cool. Uh, <laughs> He's done some good work, and I think that from the clips I've watched, from the trailers, from the from the actors being in the movie, I can tell it's going to turn out to be great. Early reviews are all pretty much perfect reviews, and yes, it looks great, and that is my number three. Great. Harrison. Harrison. Harrison uh, Mitchell. Uh, movie guru. 16. Uh, Sorry, I'm back, I'm back. Oh, okay, uh, number three. Left, uh, miss couple out. Number three, yes. Number three is The Amazing Spider-Man. Uh, pretty much everyone's been talking about this movie. A lot of people weren't that excited. I'm really pumped. Looks terrific. Looks like the right direction for the Spider-Man movies. Sam Raimi's were a little cheesy, but this one looks like it's in the right direction. Spider-Man's hilarious. He's you know, he's cracking jokes while he's kicking the bad guy's ass, but I'm excited. Mark Webb looks like he's doing a great job. Yeah, pumped as hell. Emma Stone, love heart. Andrew Garfield, love heart as well. Okay, that's a good uh, pick, Harrison. Uh, number two for me will come as a shock to most of you, but this movie is just so wanted by everyone, and me personally, it's just a movie that everyone wants to see and everyone wants to just see what it offers if it delivers uh, not much has been released at all and that is Django and Jane uh, Quentin Tarantino he uh, I like what he's doing uh, with the, uh, the the way the film sort of judging by the early plot synopsis release I like what he's doing I like the way he's doing it and yeah so Django Unchained is uh, my number two. Um, my number two is, uh, you know, it's a very hard decision because I'm so excited for both these movies. It is like the biggest tie, the biggest thought I've ever had to go through. But I'm going to have number two, The Amazing Spider-Man. I'm one of the biggest Spider-Man fans ever. I love Spider-Man. It's my favorite superhero. I, I love the original trilogy, but I still think this one is going to be great. From what I've seen, the direction, the actors. Emma Stone is my favorite actress of all time, and she will be in the movie. So, obviously, you know, it stands a little better there. And I think that uh, it's just going to be wild, and I'm going to have a good time watching uh, The Amazing Spider-Man. And thank you. Great. Harrison? Hello there. Now, my number two has to go to The Dark Knight Rises. This is a very tough decision, though. Uh, the Dark Knight is my favorite superhero movie, or one of them. Uh, Christopher Nolan's a great director. Dark Knight Rises can't, don't really have to say anymore, but I'm pumped. Alright, yeah. so um, just I uh, think I might get this out of the way first. Obviously, me, mine, and Zane's is The Dark Knight Rises for number one. It just, honestly, that yeah. That's how you make a trailer, is really all I have to say. That just, my god. So, just everything, every aspect of this film I'm excited for. I just want to see what it does. I honestly hope this film stretches out so long and covers a lot. Uh, it doesn't wrap it up, you know, like quickly. I hope it stretches a lot and just goes really in-depth into characters and, yeah, and all that sort of good stuff. So, uh, that's why it's my number one. And Zane, why is it your number one? Yeah, my number one is because, like, uh, it's directed by, like, um, Christopher, like, Nolan, and he's, 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 every one of his movies has been fantastic that I've seen. Indeed. And, uh, he, obviously, he's going to deliver. I mean, he's, that's who he is. He's that man who he is, uh, of himself. 
and uh, you know it's just, it's just going to be great. And uh, yes, the trailer, the the actors, I think have been chosen well. Maybe not Anne Hathaway. I'm still not, even yeah, though it's I'm so sorry. far in. Yeah, I, I get it. I mean, she's in now, so I can't be complaining. But yeah, she, she. I think I don't really like her as much as everyone else, but I think she's good. But uh, yes, it looks like a great movie. And The Dark Knight, after seeing how perfect it was, I can be sure that this will deliver at the IMAX. Thank you. Thank Harrison. Nice number one pick there, boys. But my number one pick has to go to Ridley Scott's Prometheus. Prometheus looks like one of the most original and innovative sci-fi movies of recent history, to be honest. I'm so excited for this movie. The trailers have been mind-blowing. Absolutely incredible. The soundtrack in the trailers is great. I'm so intrigued by this movie. They seem to be keeping it fairly under wraps, which I really like that because they did the same thing with Super 8, and it was great, and same thing with Cloverfield as well. Uh... Yeah, they're not really giving too much away, and a lot of movie trailers these days do that, and yeah, that sucks. I think we can all agree on that. Yeah. Uh, but um, yeah, I'm still excited for other movies, but Prometheus is my number one, so back to you boys. Alright, so that uh, wraps up the uh, good old podcast. I uh, hope you're yeah. all entertained. I don't think anyone's watching to the end, but um, hopefully uh, one good chapter. Stuck, stuck with us. But um, yeah, so I'm the Oz Review. Uh, I'm Zane, and I'm Harrison, the Movie Guru is sixteen. You know, and I and I'm on internet. Just left that out. <laughs> Just uh, yeah, we are. Anyway, so you know, like the video, uh, subscribe. To Have the, a little fun. Subscribe to all our channels. All the links will be in below, but. Um, if you's uh, if you know what you're doing, you should already be subscribed. But uh, yeah, so thanks for watching, and um, hope you enjoyed.